This video demonstrates how Visual Cut can take your Excel workbook data and convert it into a web schedule, a grid, or pivot tables and charts. Here's an overview of what happens when we generate a web schedule. The data from Excel has to have these columns, and Visual Cut takes care of converting that data to an interactive web page. In the case of a web grid, the process adapts itself to the number of columns and data types and generates an interactive web grid that allows you to group, sort, filter, select and move columns, change the color scheme, export and print. The real game changer is the option to convert your Excel data to web pivot tables and charts where you can create master report layouts and the user can create their own layouts. The general approach avoids any expensive infrastructure. There is no web application. It's just a one-time license cost of $300. The license never expires and there are no subscription fees. The process takes your Excel file plus an HTML template and then it generates a final HTML page that hosts the JavaScript widget and a JS file that holds the data. And then Visual Cut can SFTP upload the results to a web folder or you can simply export it to a shared folder. There are no special skills involved. It's very easy deployment and you can schedule the process. As reflected by the tab names of this web schedule, web grid, and web pivot, a scheduled task took care of refreshing their data at 7 o'clock in the morning. Here is the Visual Cut user interface, and this button allows us to manage and monitor scheduled tasks. Here is the task that took care of generating those three tabs. And if I right click and view the batch file, this task simply triggers these three command lines. The first one takes care of processing the grid, this one the schedule, and this one takes care of the sales workbook and turns it into a web pivot with tables and charts. So let's see how each one of these runs interactively. If I run this Excel file, I get a preview window that allows me to indicate what tab I'm going to target as the data source for the process. I'll click OK. The export format is a web schedule. It's just an HTML page. And this dialog acts as a wizard that allows you to set various options such as the default color scheme, an auto refresh directive to reload within a browser, the icon for the tab, and the tab name. This caused the tab name to say Excel schedule and then provided the month, the day, the hour, and the minute that the data got retrieved from Excel. This area controls the SFTP upload logic, so the page gets uploaded to my website. And if I run the process, it took only three seconds and the process already uploaded the file to the web folder. If we start the process for the grid workbook, and if we run the process, it took only three seconds. In a similar way, the sales data. And if I start the process, if we go back to the web now and refresh the information, you can see that it's indicating new times because we just ran the process again. So let's review what we get from each one of these export types. For the web schedule, we get choices about the type of display. You can move backwards and forwards in time here. Hovering over the event shows us a tooltip and clicking shows us the description and this particular event had an HTML description. The web grid allows us to group the data and once we group we can collapse all the groups and selectively expand some of them. It also allows us to select which columns we want to display. So for example I can turn off the discount column. A single click sorts, so if I click on the quantity header, sorts the quantity ascending, Another click sorts it descending, and another click removes the sort. I can filter. So for example, I can say that I want to see only this product, and I can remove the filter. I can rearrange the columns, and I can change the color scheme. 
the real game changer is the web pivot. This widget allows us to see data as tabular pivot table or a chart. If I go back to the tabular display, I'm showing by sales rep and product type, both the revenue and the average percent discount, just like an Excel pivot table. If I click on this button, I can see how that logic was constructed. This drop down allows you to change the type of aggregation that you want to apply to your metrics. And you can see that there's quite a number of options. The design here was to show only bicycles, but I can change it to show everything. The user can interact with the filters. Drill down. So if I spot a very high percent discount, I can double click that cell and drill down into that information. So these are the rows that make up that cell and I can export to Excel or PDF or CSV. The conditional formatting was done by using this dialog which allows you to add conditional formatting conditions. In this case, it says anytime average discount is more than 1.3%, I want to see the text formatted in this way. You can also control whether you're showing or hiding grand totals and subtotals. You can export, and most importantly, you can switch between provided report layouts. This happens to be the employee performance, and I can change that to percent late by rep the legend for each one of these lines. So for example, Dodsworth is the blue line. I can drill down into a node in the chart as well. I can hide or show each one of these lines by clicking on the legend. And I can bring them back. Another drill down option is demonstrated with this layout. And in this case, notice that the rows have three levels. Similarly, the columns area has product types and within that product. Because of that, the rows have this icon that allows me to expand and show the country and within the country, the customer. And in a similar way, I can also expand and collapse the product type to hide the products or show the products within the product type. In a chart view, if I switch to a column chart, these hierarchies are also supported. So I can, for example, expand King. In another video demo, the link for which I'll provide in the description below, I describe how you create these master report layouts for the users. What I'd like to demonstrate here is how any user who's provided access to this web page can create their own report layouts. So let's start by creating our own from scratch. I'll click on this button and call it test one. This layout now is saved to the local storage of my browser. Let's select product type as the rows, quantity as the value that we want to summarize, year as columns, and product class as filter. And as you can see, test one is now available to me. Other users will not see test one. They will see only the master report layouts as well as any local layouts that they save for themselves. Back in Visual Cut, to schedule the process, I can click this button, specify a name for the task, indicate that I want to create a batch file and schedule it. The batch file is created, and I can set the tasks to run at a particular time every day. Authenticate, and the task is created. As reflected by this area, Visual Cut also supports emailing. The description below provides a link to a video demonstrating how Visual Cut can take Excel data, group it by any of the columns, and burst it so that each manager receives a separate email with an embedded HTML table of the Excel data. So to review, this video focused on generating web schedules, grids, and pivots from Excel data but Visual Cut can also email burst Excel data. And you can trigger these processes using the interactive GUI via command lines from your applications or as scheduled tasks.